What is up, everybody? We are in chapter 4 of Matthew. It's one of my favorite stories about Jesus. It is a very interesting, I think. There's a lot of symbolism here, and I love chewing on stories like this. It's kind of like the creation narrative or Exodus, certain passages in Exodus. Um, have you ever seen the one where God comes to kill Moses in the middle of the night and his wife has to circumcise his kids and then rub the blood on Moses' feet? Whoa. Anyway, it's weird. But, or, which prophet was it that uh, some kids called him bald and he called some bears out of the woods to eat them, to eat the kids? Hmm? Interesting. Weird stuff. Symbolic. Nice. Chew on them. Anyways, Jesus is prepping for his ministry here. In chapter 1, he's established as an earthly authority. In chapter 2, he's compared um, to prophetic messianic texts, um, comparing him to a savior, the Messiah. And then he's, chapter 3, he's got the uh, baptism by John the Baptist, and he's being prepared for ministry. And in chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus and gathering his first disciples. Um, so we've got that to look forward to. Sorry as I adjust this, I'm getting comfy. Uh, more prep for the ministry, and Jesus starts his ministry in chapter 4. So we're going to cover the temptation of Jesus the first half of chapter 4. So um, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I don't know about you, I have fasted for a week before, and saying that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, adding he was hungry in there seems a little superfluous. It's a little bit overkill. I think we get the picture. So he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Fast for 40 days, 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, Satan is saying, you know, the tempter, Satan, says, you could, you could just turn these stones into bread. Why don't you do that? Why don't you use your power for, for your own needs? And what's interesting is every time Jesus answers with Scripture, I think that tells us something. If we are to be Christ-like, if we are to be Christians and follow Jesus, we need to know the Bible. That's why I do this. Because the answer to the world's ideas of what is good and what is right is what the Bible says is good and is right. So, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. So it's like Satan is using uh, the word. He's tempter, deceiver. Where did he get this? He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up. He's using Scripture. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So he answers with scripture that gets to the intent. So we could, Christians have used the Bible to persecute other people, to stone people, to kill people for their beliefs. And Jesus is saying, you have to get to the intent of it. You can use the words and twist them for whatever means you want. But that's not the intent. And in fact, he has very bad warnings for people that use the Bible that way, that use the Word of God and pervert it that way. Um, it's blasphemy. It's not good. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So, Jesus, I think this is important for a few reasons. The temptations, uh, 
He fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus is intentionally doing something extremely difficult. He is being tempted. He's putting himself in a vulnerable position. And I think this has big implications for us as everyday believers. Use your power to make something to, to eat out of rocks. Seems so simple. But symbolically, this is saying, you're hungry. Why don't you, out of your own power, do this? Don't let God provide for you. Provide for yourself. You are God. Why not? So he's hitting him while he has a massive hunger and appetite in the place where it hurts. And what this comes down to is our our needs in this world. Do you struggle with sexual immorality? You struggle, are, are you overweight? You struggle with appetites, like literally you eat too much? Or you're an alcoholic? If, if you've struggled with addiction? That's, he's speaking directly to this, this bodily desire that we have. If you think after 40 days and 40 nights of not fasting, you're not going to feel those hunger pangs, you're crazy. But he's saying there's something more important than that. There's something more important than answering to our bodily appetites. Now, I think it's important to point out here as well that Jesus goes through and says that our appetites, in fact, aren't sinful, but it's how we use them. We can pervert an appetite into being sinful, and he is testing himself here. Asking him to test God in his protection. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Worship me, and I will give you everything you see, Satan said. You shall worship the Lord your God. Him only shall you serve. Be gone, Satan. Satan, the devil, slanderer using words deceitfully, maliciously. He even attempts to use God's word to pervert God's intent of it. Why is Jesus tested? This is, this is kind of why this passage gets to me. Can you know yourself if you're not tested? Um, if you've ever been in the military or been through something difficult, an initiatory experience, then the point of that, a big part of that, is for you to test yourself harshly so that you have confidence that you can stand up when things get rough. In the military, that means combat or, a, a, you know, even the, the Air Force, where a lot of jobs aren't combat-oriented, but you're still in high-stress situations. People's lives are on the line, and you have to do your job well, or people die. There's a lot of stress behind that. This idea of testing yourself. Can you know yourself if you haven't been tested? I don't think you can. Not at all. Where does confidence come from? It comes from being tested and, and failed. God gives us these opportunities. These are opportunities for us. And this is why I struggle with the whole Calvinist idea and even the Arminian idea, because I believe that God is testing us, so he is implementing his sovereign will, and he's not some hands-off God. He's implemented a sovereign will for us that we're a plan for us to be tested. But we're being tested. The test is there. So whether we can pass that test without God's grace or not, I don't presume to know. I know that we need, God, we need God's grace, and there's no way we can get across the, the path of salvation without it. But where does competence come from? Where does confidence come from? This idea, did Jesus need to be tempted? Did he need to be tested? Is this a very human thing for him? Is it an example for us? Why was he tempted? You know, what, what purpose does it serve? These are some things I'm working through. But the answers that I have landed on is that Jesus is, this is an expression of Jesus' humanity. That Jesus Christ is fully God and fully human. Right? That's an Orthodox Christian belief. But what does it mean to be human? It means to be tested. It means to face temptation. It means to, and Satan is hitting him just as hard as anybody else. Harder, if not anything else. So I think that's an important thing to point out, that this temptation is something. Now the symbolism between what those different temptations mean, that's another topic for another day. It's a very interesting one. But uh, So there, that's the first half of chapter 4 on the temptation of, of Christ. So let me know down below what your favorite part of that story is. Like and subscribe to catch all these videos as they come out, and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, peace.